Hello guys, it's me again. Um, I'm here in my garage and I will show you something. Uh, well, I find it quite interesting. Um, this is an old home computer from the 80s, 90s. This one is from the mid 80s, the 1985, somewhere around that. I think 1984 actually. Um, but you know, it's from that time uh, in the 80s they had home computers like the BBC Micro, which is this one. I have a BBC Master. That one is broken, I have another BBC Master. Um, or like my dad got them from his brother, which is my uncle. He did buy um, his own BBC Micro, which is still working, which is in my room. Just like the old BB like the other BBC Master, not that one, but the other one. <laughs> and this mas Micro, sorry, Micro, is broken. Which is the one from my dad's brother, the other brother. Yes, so that's my other uncle from my dad's side which uh, this one was from but he gave it to my dad as these were not really these were very outdated and then he got it and this one is broken I will show you here's the screen yes these old screens um, you do need some AV like thing Here you can see these uh, composites oh oh no don't drop the camera like Composite I think yeah, it's called composite or something. I don't care and with these weird connectors and what happens is Here's the speaker by the way. I've just put it on top of here It's supposed to be here with this grill, but I'll just show you Oh, it sounds terrific Not really it sounds Pretty bad now. Let me turn it off for you, and it does that every time Oh making some music right here Okay, that's pretty bad. Um, now, I found the problem, and yes, these um, computers do like their keyboards. Um, these, uh, this is from the time with the, this is from the time with Commodore 64 and stuff, and this is pretty much the competitor of the Commodore 64, but in Europe, in Europe we had these as well. These came from England. I don't know where they're made, but but they were pretty much delivered to England, and then they were. Also shipped to Europe in the Netherlands, which is where I live, and they kind of like their keyboard. So if you don't have a keyboard attached to it, they're gonna, they're not gonna like it. They're not gonna like it at all. But I do have it attached, and it still doesn't work. So I figured this one out already because it was a lot of work. So let me just disconnect that. And now the problem is right here. We have sixty-five twenty-two from. Sirotech, I think, um, and there are two of them. They're both bad. They're both broken. Now you can buy these um, because they were first from MOS or MOS Technology, and then Sirotech made them, and then Rockwell started to make these as well, and they become really became really cheap after that. Um, and now you can buy them for two bucks a piece or something, which is really nice because uh, if you look at, let me find the chip, this here, you can see that's Rockwell, this is the 6502, that's the CPU in there, that's Rockwell, as you can see maybe, that's a Rockwell CPU, and, oh wait, yeah, here, this one, Acorn only. If that one is broken, you're yeah. You can pretty much buy a whole new BBC. It's you can't buy these. You can't buy these. You can't buy these. They're just broken. If they're broken, then they're gone. Um, and this one as well. They're Acon only. But these ones, um, maybe I don't know about this one. But these two and this, you can you can buy them actually. So I bought some. I blurred out my address. <laughs> um, let me get them out. So here they are, and um, yeah, they're, they're pretty cheap, they're two bucks a piece, and I just bought three of them. So um, we, all we need to do is replace these two, I've already figured it out with my working BBC. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm doing this one handed, I should get a tripod for my phone one day, but you know, it's, okay. Now let me just get this out, here we go, and you can see a very big Rockwell symbol logo on there that's rockwell well if one of these uh, doesn't work then i i uh, got three of them so you know i will just uh, figure that one out myself if, uh, if it works or not how do you take these chips out i mean they are 40 pin and you know if you break them and they you know uh, 
well, get a screwdriver. And this is the point where many people are gonna cringe, but you really don't need any special tools for this. You need Hapsake. Oh, and in case you're wondering, Hapsake is something in Dutch that I like to say a lot, and it's something like, there we go. Um, it's not really something to translate, you can't really translate it because it doesn't mean anything, it's just something I like to say and it's actually something a lot of people say here, but uh, I just like to say it whenever I do something like this, so yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, get it? Alright, sorry. There you go, got it out. I like the word hapsike, it's Dutch, but I like it so much. There we go, just put it in there. <laughs> but I mean, come on, they're broken anyways, who cares? Who cares? And now we get that one out too. Let me just focus on there. Okay. Tip. Oh, I bent this pin. No problem. Just bend it back. Just bend it back. Okay, now. Okay, this is not normally how I take chips out, but. Wow. Well, it was kind of fun to do, so, you know, I couldn't resist my. Anyways, they're broken, so, you know, I'm toss them out. And these are the new working ones. And yes, they have been shipped pretty nicely in one of these foam pads. That's quite nice. Here you can see Rockwell 6522. Uh, you can't really see it that well but it is definitely there. You can see a little notch thing right here. That is pretty much the notch they need to go. And anyways if, you, if that isn't obvious enough every single chip in this computer uh, points with the notch that way, <laughs> that way, that way. Every single chip. There's not a chip that doesn't point that direction. Anyways, um, oh, and by the way, I've spent like one or two weeks s just swapping all the chips and taking some chips out before I got to the conclusion that the 65222s were the ones who were broken. What I uh, first did was I swapped these around. I was like, maybe, maybe they're swapped around or maybe they're broken at certain pins and and then it I got it to start up but it made some weird noises and didn't really work and you well know, they're cheap anyway so I bought some new ones and that's how I found the problem yes it did take me quite long but you know I don't have the appropriate equipment people would say let me just turn off the TV I don't have the appropriate equipment to really fix these things in a manner that I can do it in one day with some like pin checker that I can like with some needle thing and just put in all, all the pins and get some signals and get some signals and get the stuff and get all data and stuff no I can't but you can still fix them without that it just takes a little longer so now let me just just for safety here you can see this is earth this is earth um, and it will just electrostatic it will just discharge me from any electro electrics electrostatic discharge. Isn't that hard to say? Oh god. Okay, so these are quite nice and I can just put them in like so. And maybe the pins are a little bit bent outwards, which is the case with this one. So you just get something like this, and I like to use this because it's all metal, so it will short out the pins. So it won't um kill anything. I mean I normally don't care about electrostatic discharge, but you know these chips are not easy replaceable so i just just like to bend them like that now be scared they're not gonna break off and uh, we should have it oh i'm putting it on plastic not good but who cares i mean if you're gonna cringe in the comments i don't care mate i, I really don't care eh. <laughs> i'm trying to bend the pins in am i doing it in a cringy way hell yeah Am I doing it in a way you would probably do it? No. Should you do it this way? No. Am I doing it this way? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna bend it a little more, but you know, I will be right. It's a little easier with two hands. Now, it fits in quite nicely. If I'm not... Yes, it fits in. Nice. Now the second one. Alright, so now I've got both... Um, 6502s in. Oh, no, 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 please. This is editing, Cal. Here, back at it again. Oh, God, Cal. You're not the smartest when you're filming with your camera. I was talking about the 6522s, not the 6502s, which is the CPU. And you only have one 6502 in the BBC with two 
22s. So that's a mistake I made. And I'm out. Bye. Uh, these two. And I got this attached to the keyboard. Now let's try it out. Oh wait, there's... Maybe there's a bit of solder. Now I need to blow that out first. Just pretty much um, detach the keyboard. Detach the speaker, which is attached to the keyboard. And then just detach the, this TV part. And just dump it upside down. Okay, now we reconnect everything. And now, moment, the moment of truth. Let's see. Yes, it works. The 6502s work. Wait, no, <laughs> sorry, that's this. That's the CPU. The 6522s, they work. Oh, yeah. Now, the only thing is, these LEDs are a bit... Mm, Shitty, but um, you know, I'm gonna repair them. Run. Yeah, that's proper speed. All right. Now escape and run again. Yep, that's how it should what it should look like. If I'm right, you can't hear a whole lot. You can hear a very very slight tone. Um, but um, um, just the keyboard isn't fully working. Oh, I'm sorry. I should focus really. Um, just the keyboard isn't fully working. But hey, this is awesome. It works. All right. Now I've got. Now ah. So my soldering iron back into my cable. That's a bummer. I just need to fix my caps lock um, LED, and then I will put it all back together. And um, yeah, I think. Uh, this is quite successful, but uh, it didn't take me uh, like 10 minutes to figure this out. It took me a whole week, so <laughs> don't say this was an easy fix. It wasn't, um, but it was a fun fix. It was quite a lot of fun digging through a whole 8-bit computer and, you know, just learning as we go what what, what is, you know, some basic ROMs and... Um, all right, so I found a problem as you can see. Oh, there, there, oh, oh. I leaked something on there, but as you can see, it is working. This is of course not some lock key or something, it's a cassette key, I, uh, key. <laughs> this is the cassette um, LED, this this is not with some lock key, but you know, it's for the cassette, which you, I think, plug in there, yep, that's that part over here, uh, which we don't use, uh, We which my dad didn't even use, so you know, I'm not gonna use that, but yep, this one is working, yes, I had to replace that LED because I accidentally blew it while testing it um, the other day. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> to mention. The problem was a little crack in the solder um, here, where the ribbon attaches. The whole computer works, except the keyboard has a couple of flaws. The 2 key doesn't always respond. The shift key does, the 2 doesn't. Well, because you mostly use it for print, and then you press shift 2, and then nothing happens. Um, so, can we repair that without buying a whole new keyboard or keys? Yes, we can, really easily. Let me just get this out of the way. We do need a soldering iron for this. We're gonna desolder the two key, but first we need to pop it out. So we just pop out this key, pop out that key. This hurts like hell. I mean, you should really use a proper key cap removal for this. And in my case, that would be a screwdriver. <laughs> there we go, we got it out, no problem. It's a good idea to remove this in case you... I mean, you don't want to bend this, so in case you bend this, this isn't going to work anymore, and you would need to find a new one, which you really can't. And as you can make one yourself, so I'm just going to remove that one. Pop to the side, like that. And you can remove the speaker. But I just got it done, so I'm not going to remove it. So what we want to do is desolder that one first. So we got to find it. And they're a little bit offset, sometimes, uh, as far as you can see. So, it, But it's not. But it may look like that. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. So all you got to do is place your finger there. And then you try to align it with the other side. Just check. And you just rotate it like that. Flip to the board. And there it is. That's the key you want to desolder. Really easy, and now I'm just gonna desolder and show you how you pop it open and repair them. 
popping it out is as easy as just these two clips may need to bend inwards and then you can pop it out if you completely desoldered the other side so i'm gonna do that off camera really quick and then i will show you how to repair them so now you might be wondering how do you um open these up now it's really easy all you need to do is actually unscrew uh, with this particular key um the pvc key so you need to unscrew the pretty much contact points here and um, you just unscrew them with a little i don't know pair of pliers and then you can pretty much open it up just like that um, the master, which I also did this with, has a bit of a different type of key. It has a little clip um, on the side, on like, I think, this side here. But, yeah, you, you might have to destroy that after such a long period of pretty much doing nothing. It might stick to this side, but, well, you can pretty much close them up with the contact points here, which also act as screws, so it's not a big deal. Now, I found our problem here. Um... What happens is here you have the little oh, here you have a little um, plate and one of these goes through and touches the plate and one of these goes through and does not touch these well plates pretty much there are two plates very thin metal be very careful and what mostly happens is these legs are completely corroded uh, these little pins and what happens if when you press the key that little um, lip gets pressed against this little pin but because it's corroded it doesn't make a good connection so you need to sand that down and put a little bit of contact cleaner in there and it should be all fine to go as you can see it is completely sanded down well a little bit sanded down not completely um, because well you do need the pins and they're very small and all I need to do now is put in a little bit of this contact spray contact cleaner into that little switch and we should be fine so here we go and that's it now put it back together we press the switch a little bit makes a funny sound um that's fine so we clean the contact just do a build a, a little bit like that and now what we want to do is check for continuity because it should only make a contact from that pin to that pin if you press it but it should not make a contact from that pin to, from one pin to the another uh, if you do not press it of course that's the whole point of a switch so we need to check if we have ruined it and if we did we need to go back in and change the position of the little plates in there and i know it's very tedious but if you want a working switch you know you gotta do this um, so let's just check really quick let me just put it in a vise so it doesn't move around all that much there we go as you can see it's attached I'm getting my little probe here and I'm gonna touch it and oh, oh. oh I got some bad news mates as you can see when I touch it yeah it's short that's bad news. So now we should open it back up and uh, see what's going on. See now, I've got my little multimeter thing here. And, okay, nothing. And if we press the switch, oh god, this was a bad idea. Here you can see, if I press the switch, yep, we fixed it. All I did was bend the lip a little bit more that way. The other way um, from the uh, little uh, contact pins here so it uh, didn't touch it and uh, if I press the switch works beautifully every time so uh, that's a success now we can solder it back into place it needs to go this way even though that one is that way around it doesn't really matter but if you want it um, the way around it was originally um, I just look at the key, um, oh it might go that way, it doesn't really matter of course, but, well, it doesn't matter, we're gonna put it this way around then, um, I don't know, it doesn't matter, um, I thought it was that way around, but, uh, I just click it back into place, like that, pins are sticking out there, and yes, I did 
Let's try to fat a little bit here. Um, I'm sorry. Here. Uh, but we can easily fix it up. But, well, all I need to do is get a little knife. A little Stanley knife, whatever. A hobby knife. And just scrape a little bit of the track there. Clean it up. Scrape a little bit of the track there. Scrape a little bit of that track. If you need some wires, you can totally do that, but um, you can... This one you can totally fix with just a little bigger solder blob like that one over there. And there we go. Looks fine. Alright, so as you can see, just sitting on my floor here. <laughs> on the floor. Um, I've got two working BBCs now, two micros, and as you can see, I've got one working master over here, which works totally fine. Um, it's just one more master to go, which I will do this summer, so that's, yeah, that's in a couple of weeks, actually, not that long. And it's, uh, summer break for me, uh, in here in the Netherlands. It's, uh, it's quite long break, it's not extremely long like like you would uh, say uh, you would have in uh, America but you know and then it's just long enough for me so um, I will figure the second master out uh, in the in my summer break and I will obviously film that but here you can see um, this was the first most, uh, micro and this is my second one uh, that I've got working right now as you can see I got no screws for the lid um, my dad didn't have them anymore as you can see this is one issue this is this is an issue 7 board as you can see and this is an issue 4 board um, so yeah this one is a bit older uh, than that one um, and actually you can see this one is a bit more yellowed than the, the other one which is my dad's one and this one is also my dad's but um, he got it from my uncle which is his brother obviously um, and well I've seen people on the internet like the 8-bit guy which I watch um, you know often whenever he uploads and he used hydrogen peroxide um, to cover the plastic. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, as you might know, is not a stable. Um, it's not very stable. It will fall apart um, after a long time or after a short time, depending on how you store it. And um, he uses it. He uses it with a com in combination of UV light or just the sun or a UV lamp, and that will restore it to its original color, even lighter than this one, because this one has been yellowed a little bit, just a little bit. Um, but the thing with hydrogen peroxide is, it is well, it it does brighten the colors up. It is not what I want to use because it does weaken the plastic and um, you use this top part to put a screen uh, like a monitor a proper big monitor on there you can use a flat screen for this so you need all kinds of converters and I don't have them so I use proper big monitors and if you weaken this up with hydrogen peroxide well it's just gonna crack and that's oh that's not good that is it's a shame really and uh, you might say sand it down but you can hear there's a nice texture and I don't want to get rid of the texture so I'm just gonna leave it as it is I mean it works now it it works perfectly fine the whole keyboard works no features are missing as you can see it all works it's all it should be um, as you can see this one is missing uh, that's only that's a uh, Econet is master only only BBC masters have Econet <laughs> Just as this one. Um, this one is actually modded. My dad modded this one. <laughs> and, um, well, yeah. I'm just quite happy with how it uh, is now. And I'm not going to change it. So, uh, two working micros. But uh, if you like this video, if uh, it helped you with fixing your BBC or maybe your Commodore 64, whatever, they're kind of similar. Um, don't forget to drop a like if you would like to like this video. <laughs> oh, anyways, um, I will see you in my next video. When I maybe repair the monster, do some other science stuff, and uh, well, bye guys.